In the previous video, we had learnt about the various cranial nerve nuclei which are located within the medulla. In this video, let us learn about the remaining structures. Let us begin with the pyramids. Pyramids are two elongated swellings seen on the ventral aspect of the medulla, one on either side of the midline. Two cranial nerves are closely related to it. One is the abducens nerve, which exits above the pyramids at the level of pontomedullary junction, and the other is the twelfth cranial nerve or the hypoglossal nerve, which exits lateral to the pyramids along the ventrolateral sulcus. Pyramids are compact fiber bundles made up of corticospinal, corticonuclear, and corticopontine fibers, of which the corticospinal fibers are the most abundant. Corticospinal fibers descend straight through the medulla. At the lower end of the medulla, majority of these fibers cross over to the opposite side at the pyramidal decussation and they continue as the lateral corticospinal tract. The rest of the uncrossed fibers descend on the ipsilateral side. Corticonuclear fibers relay in one of the cranial nerve nuclei which are present in the medulla or they may relay in the inferior olivary nuclear complex or in the dorsal column pathway nuclei or in one of the nuclei of the reticular formation. Corticopontine fibers either relay in arcuate nuclei or into pontobulbar body because these two are the displaced pontine nuclei. Now coming to the dorsal column pathway nuclei, this includes actually four nuclei on either side. The nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus receive discriminative touch, pressure, vibration and conscious proprioception information from the ipsilateral half of the body. This information reaches them through the primary afferents which are travelling in fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. These nuclei relay this information to the contralateral thalamus via the internal arcuate fibers and the medial lemniscus. We have already discussed this pathway in detail in the video on dorsal column pathway. Now, accessory cuneate nuclei are located lateral to the nucleus cuneatus. They receive lateral fibers in the fasciculus cuneatus, which carry the proprioceptive information from the ipsilateral upper limbs. They convey this information to the cerebellum through the posterior external arcuate fibers or the cuneocerebellar tracts. The fourth nucleus is a nucleus Z which is located just cranial to the nucleus gracilis. This nucleus conveys the conscious proprioceptive information from the ipsilateral lower limb to the contralateral thalamus through the medial lemniscal pathway. Now coming to the inferior olivary nuclear complex. This is a group of precerebellar nuclei which are underlying the olives. As we have already seen, the largest nucleus in this group is the inferior olivary nucleus itself, which is a hollow, irregularly crenated mass of grey matter, showing its hilum which faces dorsomedially. And this nucleus is surrounded by white matter called as olivary amiculum, which is mainly contributed by the central tegmental tract. This nuclear complex also includes dorsal accessory olivary nucleus, and the medial accessory olivary nucleus which are located in relation to the inferior olivary nucleus as their names are suggesting. Now fibers which start from the inferior olivary nucleus forms the olivocerebellar tract and the fibers which start from the medial and dorsal accessory olivary nuclei will form the par olivocerebellar tract and these tracts cross the midline by cutting through the medial lemniscus and reticular formation so as to reach the contralateral inferior cerebellar peduncles. Through these inferior cerebellar peduncles, they reach the cerebellum. Among all the afferents to the cerebellum, these are the only input fibers which are known as climbing fibers because they climb straight to the molecular layer of the cerebellar cortex and terminate directly on the dendrites of Purkinje cells. Whereas all the other inputs, they reach the granular layer of the cerebellar cortex and those are known as mossy fibers. 
Now let us learn about various connections to the inferior olivary nucleus. Inferior olivary nuclear complex receives inputs from contralateral spinal cord via the spino olivary tract. It receives input from various sensory nuclei in the brainstem itself that is dorsal column nuclei, vestibular nuclei and trigeminal nuclei. It also receives input from the ipsilateral cerebral cortex, basal ganglia and thalamus. It receives information from periaqueductal grey and red nuclei which are located in the midbrain via the central tegmental tract. It also receives information from the cerebellar cortex via the cerebellar olivary pathway. Its main output is to the cerebellar cortex either as olivocerebellar tract or par olivocerebellar tract which travel through the inferior cerebellar peduncle. The second output is to the contralateral spinal cord through the olivospinal tract. So basically if you look at all these connections, inferior olivary nuclear complex is a motor relay center. It is therefore connected with all those parts of the CNS which are concerned with motor activities. So let me now try and make sense of all these connections. While the inputs from the cerebrum conveys the information about what is the intended moment, inputs from the spinal cord as well as the sensory and vestibular nuclei will relay the information about what is actually being executed. And one of its most important information comes from the red nucleus through the central tegmental tract. Now red nucleus receives output from the cerebellum and conveys this information to the inferior olivary nuclear complex. So whenever there is novelty det detection or error detection, this system becomes activated. So red nucleus conveys the information to the inferior olivary nuclear complex, which then sends excitatory impulses to the cerebellum. Each climbing fiber which is starting from the inferior olivary nuclear complex upon reaching cerebellum will synapse with dendrites of one to few Purkinje cells only in a somatotopic arrangement so that their impulses will set in a complex spike in the Purkinje cells. Now this results in the corrective behavior of the error signals so that any mismatch that is present between what is intended and what is being executed will be corrected. So this is a part of motor learning. Now coming to the displaced pontine nuclei, these are again precerebellar nuclei. Arcuate nuclei are situated anterior to the pyramids in the upper part and the pontobulbar bodies are capping the inferior cerebellar peduncle. As we already know, the cerebral cortex has a contralateral representation whereas cerebellar cortex has an ipsilateral representation. So the fibers which are starting from the cerebral cortex and which will relay into these nuclei, that is corticopontine fibers, after they relay in the nuclei, the fibers which start from these nuclei have to cross to the opposite side so as to reach the ipsilateral or the uh, intended side of the cerebellar cortex. So the fibers which start from the arcuate nuclei either cross on the ventral aspect of the medulla or they cross to the opposite side on the dorsal aspect of the medulla. Those which cross on the ventral aspect of the medulla will go around the olives and reach the contralateral inferior cerebellar peduncle. These are known as circum olivary bundle because they are going around the olives or they are known as anterior external arcuate fibers. Some of the fibers which start from the arcuate nuclei may go straight through the substance of medulla, reach the posterior surface where they cross to the opposite side, continue as triamedullaris and reach the contralateral inferior cerebellar peduncles. We have already seen that striamedullaris are the visible fibers on the floor of the fourth ventricle which separate the pons above from the medulla below. So we have learnt about a couple of arcuate uh, different types of arcuate fibers in medulla. One is the internal arcuate fibers. These begin from nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. They belong to dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. They carry discriminative touch and conscious proprioception information. The second set is the anterior external arcuate fibers. 
they begin from the arcuate nuclei they belong to the corticopontocerebellar pathway and they are involved with coordination of fine movements the third set is the posterior external arcuate fibers they begin from the accessory cuneate nuclei they belong to the cuneocerebellar tract pathway and they carry non conscious proprioceptive information from the upper limbs to the cerebellum thank you very much hope you enjoyed this video you can visit this site for other neuroanatomy videos thank you